Hello, my name is Miranda Martinez and I'm from Access Counseling. Today I will be talking to you about social emotional learning. We will be focusing on the key component of relationship skill building, focusing specifically on teamwork. As humans, we are born to crave connection and relationships is a key piece of that. When we talk about teamwork, it's something we learn at a young age that carries us throughout life. Andrew Carnegie stated, teamwork is the ability to work together toward a common vision, the ability to direct individual accomplishments towards organizational objectives. It is the fuel that allows common people to obtain uncommon results. So when we talk about teamwork, what is it? Teamwork is defined as the combined action of a group of people, especially when effective and efficient. Things to remember, when we talk about connection and bonding, we know this takes place at an early age. When we think about the population that we serve, we have to take into account the adverse childhood experiences, the ACEs, and how this could impact our children's future tremendously. It is important to remember that it's not uncommon for our students to come to school unregulated. Many of our students have had to learn how to survive in a world that does not meet their needs. This results in a child that is used to taking care of themselves and not relying on others. This can be a great skill in some aspects of their lives. However, in environments where teamwork is needed, they struggle. With this in mind, it's important to remember that our students have possibly experienced personal trauma. What we know is that with the pandemic, it has increased reports of abuse. I encourage you to keep in mind that your students have a lot on their plates. It can be hard to focus when they are worried about what's happening at home. So what is social emotional learning? Social emotional learning, SEL, is an integral part of education and human development. SEL is the process through which all young people and adults acquire and apply the knowledge, skill, and attitude to develop healthy identities manage emotions, and achieve personal and collective goals, feel and show empathy for others, establish and maintain supportive relationships, and make responsible and caring decisions. Vital to relationships and teamwork. Relationship skills, teamwork, the ability to establish and maintain healthy and supportive relationships and to effectively navigate settings with diverse individuals and groups. This includes the capacity to communicate clearly, listen actively, cooperate, work collaboratively to problem solve and negotiate conflict constructively navigate settings with differing social and cultural demands and opportunities, provide leadership, and seek or offer help when needed. So breaking these down further, these are the key components. Communicating effectively, developing positive relationships, demonstrating cultural competency, practicing teamwork and collaborative problem solving, resolving conflict constructively, resisting negative social pressure, 
showing leadership in groups, seeking or offering support and help when needed, standing up for others' rights. Why this goal is important. Building and maintaining positive relationships with others are central to success in school and life and require the ability to recognize the thoughts, feelings, and perspectives of others, including those different from one own. In addition, establishing positive peer, family, and work relationships requires skills in cooperating, communicating respectfully, and constructively resolving conflict with others. Let's talk about teamwork and the components of teamwork. Starting with communicate clearly. Effective communication requires the use of verbal and nonverbal skills to express oneself. Communication involves not only speaking clearly and conveying ideas appropriately, but also understanding body language, facial expressions, and gestures that can contribute to accurate delivery and perception. A strong sense of self-awareness can assist in building communication skills. Listening well. Active listening depends on the ability to consciously make the effort to hear and comprehend what the other person is saying and respond appropriately. Some fundamental skills involved in active listening include appropriate eye contact, regulate thoughts to limits, Cooperate with others. When students cooperate, they each become active members working towards a common goal. Cooperation requires that students be flexible, have an awareness of self and others, take turns, respect each other's thoughts and opinions, listen well, and practice effective problem solving. Resisting inappropriate social pressure. Strong self-management skills can help students to communicate and commit to their decision to not engage in unwanted, unsafe, unethical behavior. This type of behavior can range from academic integrity issues to self-destructive patterns. Negotiate conflict constructively. Conflict resolution involves achieving mutually satisfactory resolution to conflict by addressing the needs of all concerned. In order to resolve an issue in a relationship, students must know how to calmly discuss the problem, brainstorm solutions, and come to an appropriate decision. Seeking and offering help when needed. Students should be encouraged to check their understanding in both the academic and social situations. If students hit a roadblock while working to achieve a goal, they need to know how and when to ask for help. For both the student and the educator, assessing whether or not it is appropriate to offer assistance is a delicate skill as well. Place, tone, and response are all factors in offering useful support. Why is this important? Overall, research reveals that students with social and emotional skills perform better academically, have stronger relationships with peers and teachers, experience greater well-being, 
and engage in less risky behavior. In addition, SEL skills positively impact education, employment, and mental health outcomes in adulthood. We are all important. This work takes a village. All of the adults in a child's life, in the classroom, at school, at home, and in the community, must work together to provide meaningful SEL opportunities. Educators and parents already intuitively model SEL. The framework helps make this work more intentional and strategic, enriched with research-based tools and the best practices. When children have these skills, they have a toolbox to pull from when they face any challenge, big or small. SEL proactively builds that toolbox, so it is best done before significant problems arise. In this sense, SEL is on the prevention side of mental health. So let's talk about interventions. In the coming slides, we're going to talk about how to put this into action. I have broken down different interventions based on age groups. You will find different ways that you'll be able to build teamwork and problem solving skills by utilizing these interventions. So let's start with the elementary age student. I have provided three interventions for this age group. The class quilt, lineup, and sand castle. Each one is fun and creative. The classroom quilt. The quilt is an opportunity to use art to demonstrate that individuals are unique and how that uniqueness can be used within the community. For this intervention, you will need various art supplies such as construction paper, art crayons, paint, marker, glue, glitter, yarn. Each student will have a piece of construction paper to use as their quilt piece. You'll ask them to decorate their quilt square as a representation of their interest, abilities, goals, family and friends. This is to help the students understand that they're all individuals, but that it's important for the individuals to come together and work together and that working together, they can create something beautiful. The teachers will have the opportunity to refer back to this intervention and reinforce the teamwork, the collaboration and the cooperation and how they were able to make something beautiful. You should stress that equality and uniqueness is important and remind them that it is also important to accept others when working together. Lineup activity. The lineup activity is a creative way to communicate and help to develop cooperation and leadership. You're going to want to tell your students that they must line up in order according to their birthdays. The one rule is that they can't speak. Give the students about five minutes to work on this. Once the line is formed, have the students speak their birthdays aloud to see if they were successful in completing the task. Now discuss how, communi how they communicated without using words and how leading and following are important to teamwork. The last intervention in this section is Sandcastle. This is an intervention that allows children to be able to reflect on what teamwork means to them. 
as they color a summer scene of their friends building a sound castle together. You are able to work with this intervention and speak with the kids about what does teamwork mean to them? How does teamwork help you accomplish things at home, at school, and in the community? These are all questions that can be used to work with the students during the intervention. In this next section, we're going to talk about middle school age students. The three interventions that I've provided are the acoustic poem, sentence mix-up game, and the cooperation bingo. This intervention is the acrostic poem. An acrostic poem is a poem of a word or phrase that describes a topic word. The topic word is written vertically and each line of the poem starts with the letter of the topic word. You want to try and make it fun. This is a unique poetry form for kids. You can have them brainstorm words and phrases for each of the letters to describe the topic. Have them think of nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs, depending on the ability of the child. You can have the children share their work in class so everyone can see what teamwork means to them. And then you have the opportunity to display your artwork and your poem out for the school or in the classroom. Sentence mix-up game. This is a unique intervention and it's quite fun. It is a collaborative story building game. So everyone has an opportunity to work together to develop this story. The students get to vote on the different story elements and we get to see at the end how working together as a team you were able to construct a fun story and it's something that you guys will be able to read out to each other and enjoy later on. The last intervention in this section is Cooperation Bingo. This is a fun, interactive way to teach teamwork or cooperation. You play this intervention by passing out the bingo cards and then engaging in the game of bingo as you traditionally would. If you would like, you can have candy to be able to use as markers for the game. Another version of this game is to recognize when a student is engaging in these behaviors and when the student gets a bingo, they get a prize. The last alternative way to play cooperation bingo would be to have the students come together to list positive teamwork behaviors what teamwork looks like, what it sounds like, and then create the bingo board and then go ahead and engage in the bingo game. Our last section is for the high school age students. I provided three interventions for this age group, cup stacking, saving Sam, and best part of our school. The first intervention is cup stacking. As you can see from the picture, the students are going to have five red cups and some strings. They're going to have to work together to be able to complete the task that is set before them. There are reflection questions that I would encourage you to use with this activity. How well did your team work together to move the cups? At what point in the activity did you feel like everybody was working together? 
Describe a moment when your team became frustrated. How did you work through this? And tell how one of your team members exemplified collaboration or communication. The next intervention is Saving Sam. This intervention allows students to work together to be able to help Sam. He's fallen into the ocean and we're trying to give him a life jacket to save him. With this intervention, there is a worksheet that can be used with three different sections. So, and it asks, what does teamwork look like? What does teamwork sound like? And what does teamwork feel like? It's an opportunity for them to be able to write down and discuss what are components of good teamwork and also having the opportunity to identify what doesn't work so well in a team. The last intervention we have is the best part of our school. This is an intervention that breaks the students up into small groups of four to six. You want to make sure that the students don't collaborate with their typical friend group. You want to have the students share their ideas in the group and then work together to choose the ones that include the, the top five positive aspects about their school. Then you're gonna have the students pick one person from their group to go up to the board and to write down those top picks. You're gonna have the whole class work together then to decide which are the top 10 best things about their school. Thank you for taking the time to watch this PowerPoint about teamwork. I hope it was helpful in providing you with the basic knowledge about SLE and teamwork. Please feel free to contact me with any questions.